Hi everyone, I'm Rita Kakati Shah, your host for The Uma Show. Welcome to your one-stop journey for feeling empowered. We're a platform for change. We build confidence. We are your voice. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma. Today, we're exploring your inner belief through fashion. And I'm so excited to be joined by our goddess of go-getting, Savita Gilbert, who is joining us from Washington, D.C. And she is the CEO and the chief designer at Inner Belief. Welcome, Savita. How are you today? Oh my gosh. Hi, Rita. And uh, thank you to the UMA show. And um, uh, how are you doing? And I'm honored to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. So let's start by talking about your heritage, um, your childhood. We all want to hear about how you grew up and a bit about you. Yes. Um, so I'm originally from Bangalore, India. I was born in New Delhi, but I'm, I uh, grew up uh, for the most part in Bangalore. That's my background. And uh, I was, uh, you know, made to live with my grandmother from the age of 11. And so um, that's, uh, you know, I stayed in Bangalore while my parents were moving all over the country. And so um, my artistic journey kind of really began there. But that's, um, that's a little bit about my background. I yeah. love it. Very nice. Um, and then speaking about your background, you're actually an attorney uh, by, by profession. Um, talk to us a bit about your career path. Yes. Yeah, so um, I actually attended the National Law School of India in Bangalore and began my journey uh, as an attorney there. I worked at the Supreme Court of uh, at New Delhi uh, when I graduated from law school for a couple of years before I made my way as an immigrant to the US to, to do a master's program. But my entire journey during uh, this a time was also, there was an artistic background to it. But um, I actually, yes, I did. Uh, I began my career there um, in India as uh, a court going attorney. Um, yeah, and I wanted to ask you actually, because obviously education plays a big part of a lot of um, South Asian backgrounds, um, as you and I both know. Um, how did you end up pursuing the path of law in the first place? You know, um, I may have to backtrack a little bit to your first two questions because they tie in, the artistic journey comes from there. When I had to leave my parents and live with my grandparents, and while everybody was very loving in our house, just me and the personality I was, I suffered a lot of anxiety because I was 11 to leave my mother in particular. And, um, and I started developing asthma and you know that sort of thing. So actually when I started doing watercolors, I found that power of art to heal. And um, when I went to college, which was also in Bangalore, um, I started actually, I found joy in just doing fun things like making clothes for my classmates who were my buddies. Um, and they just like loved it. It sparked so much joy in our relationship. Um, actually, a couple of my college friends contacted me recently and said they still have that outfit. I was blown away, you know. And um, so, you know, the artistic journey began there. Um, However, when I went to um, you know, work at New Delhi and with the Supreme Court routines, I had to completely put art aside, but I'm grateful for the experience as an attorney because it really made me develop the kind of discipline and skills that uh, are essential to succeed in life, which I think had I just been on an artistic journey, I may not have developed those skills. I might have just been on some sort of a artistic journey purely for what it is. But those skills of building a business, of you know working as an attorney, of meeting deadlines came from that. And I'm very grateful for that experience. Yeah. Mm, no, thank you for sharing that because quite a lot, a lot of the time we kind of, especially with academia, we think of oh, things like you go into law because that's your traditional background and that's really how it started. But for you, it was actually you have always had that creative background and then you went into the legal profession and you actually found it helped what you do now. So thank you for sharing that. Now, you did mention um, tinkering with making clothes even in your youth. Um, talk to us a little bit about inner belief and where the idea of your entrepreneurial journey first started. So again, to continue the story from where I left off of going to um, work as an attorney, um, 
The reason I actually went to become an attorney was not because I don't love law. I love the practice of law. But there wasn't a path when I grew up as an artist that was a, um, a career path that was viable. And so mm -hmm. I think we were either pushed into engineering law. That's what the culture was at the time. So I chose law uh, because that was the most creative thing close to art that I found. But I also love law. I love language. You know, so it all kind of tied in. But coming to the U.S. fast forward, um, I wanted to explore more, more internationally. I wanted to uh, have a broader kind of stage than just going to court. Um, I, I wanted to explore more about what possibilities were. I came to the United States um, as a student. Uh, graduated, worked as an attorney for some time, but I found that as I was working, especially when I came to Washington, D.C., fast forward, you know, maybe several years later, as an executive, at a, at a, you know, a legal executive at a company, I realized that there were no viable real in Washington, D.C. in particular. Uh, I didn't see that there were clothes that resonated other than just wearing something that was a dark suit, you know, if you wanted to go to a boardroom or if you wanted to go, um, you know, wear something colorful, uh, there wasn't that much of a venue for it. Mm -hmm. So I found that that limitation is what I had to really change if I wanted to be the change. And so um, I decided to create, you know, this line of clothing. Um, it was an idea in my mind, but I think what really, you know, so there was this background of all these things that I discovered that I felt limited by. But the trigger point was really the pandemic because I connected two things. I felt like just as I found art lifted my spirits when I was a kid with asthma, I was like, this is exactly what needs to lift people's spirits and the time is now. And then I also saw the limitations of, you know, what, you know, women could wear at these professional venues or book signings or TED Talks or just things like that true to, you know, where we are here and felt like the timing is right for this. We have to do this. So we are, uh, you know, Inner Belief really was creating during the pandemic. And, um, and also the idea is um, that we're able to offer beautiful clothing, uh, nature-inspired clothing to influencer women. So that's really how all of this morphed into this journey, if you will, yeah. Mm, well, I love saying that. I love how you talk about how you inspire others with your beautiful designs. And just to let you know, I'm wearing one of your beautiful designs today oh. and I feel so inspired because of this. So absolutely everything you said, 100%, I can vouch for that. It's beautiful, inspiring, and it's, and it's just a great, field of fact as well um and then your designs have actually been featured in many fashion shows um so tell us a bit about that okay first of all thank you for wearing this dress you 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 rock it you look smashing i'm very honored um about fashion shows you know um inner belief has um you know, um, a two-pronged approach. One is we are a designer brand and fashion shows are important because they are a venue for us to showcase our clothing with, um, you know, as a designer brand. So fashion shows are, you know, quintessentially very important to us. So I wanna talk about two shows. One, of course, um, that we did in November. Uh, this was our own private show. And this was um, an influencer woman show where we had many, uh, you know, amazing women talk about um, their inner belief, so to speak, wearing this clothing and it, it inspired their own journey. And that was something, um, you know, is, is very tied into our mission because our, our company mission is really about inspiring people to be their best, to do their best. And so, um, you know, any, any show that we do uh, is, really, is really in line with that because we want our clothing to reflect um, this and inspire the wearer, inspire those around, and um, you know, and 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 also, um, you know, the, what what was amazing about this show was the women who showcased uh, the clothing and talked about what they do wearing that clothing were able to really talk about how that inner light of humanity um, and hope to create a better future shone 
in how they presented themselves, not only in what they said, but also in what they were wearing. So um, that shows something that that was a mentionable in November. Uh, more recently, we were at DC Fashion Week and um, this was just in February this year. And um, DC Fashion Week, uh, I, I, I really am so uh, appreciative and honored that Ian Williams, the executive director of, in, of uh, DC Fashion Week, um, you know, uh, had us also part of the Emerging Designer Show. Um, and uh, it, was, it, it was an amazing show with, um, among many other amazing designers. Um, and we were able to show our nature inspired theme and our theme really was roses and skies because we wanted to celebrate um, roses are very significant to Washington DC it's the actually the American beauty rose is the official flower of it of DC and skies because the skies of DC are iconic we have a mixture of the air from the the bay, the Chesapeake Bay and the Shenandoah Mountains, the pressure difference creates very colorful skies. And we have all these monuments, you know, in that backdrop. So I wanted some of these colors and, you know, I, I, I captured them in ombre kind of patterns and had roses in several others. And um, even like roses are part of your outfit, you know, so um, that is something we wanted to, um, instill a pride in DC. So that's what we brought to DC Fashion Week. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, the, the, that's sort of like uh, what happened at the past two fashion shows we've had. Uh, absolutely beautiful. And I've seen the publicity around that you've had a lot and the designs are really out there and really influenced the people, like you said, are, are talking about them and they're great. So thank you again for sharing that and all the best of luck to your future progress with all of that. So um, people always say that, you know, where there's success, it started off as being a part of a challenge at some point in your life. And challenges are part and parcel of life, but it's really how we deal with them that strengthens and sets us apart. So could you talk to us about either a personal or professional challenge that you had, but what you did to overcome it? You know, I think the biggest challenge and part of the, the reason why I call this line inner belief um, and this company inner belief is because it is exactly that. And that was the challenge. And it was also the solution. I really believe we are the challenge and we are also the solution is what I, that's my inner belief, you know? And so your question is so on point because um, my biggest challenge for creating this was the courage to be an artist mm. um, and overcoming that. The rest of it are regular challenges that I think all entrepreneurs face. But the biggest challenge was my inner belief and belief in myself. Can I do this? You know, what was greater? Was it the fear of failing that was greater? Or was it the determination to really create something extraordinary for people that took priority? And I think at every moment, we all face this challenge, fear of failing, or is my determination to win more important than my fear of failing? Because mm -hmm. I believe that self-doubt is there with all of us. And I think my self-doubt came in ways of, oh, I'm an attorney and who's gonna take me seriously as an attorney if I'm an artist, you know? Or um, because I grew up in, in a you know, place and time, it's different now, but the time I grew up in India, it was if you want in a professional, you know, kind of program and profession, you know, artists um, was something you did for a hobby. It wasn't a main dish. So, um, that mindset had to also transform. But it was really my courage to challenge that and say, no, I think we can be artists. I think we can have an artistic profession and be successful at it. We don't have to believe what is just purely given to us. And do I have the courage to believe that and actually do it? So to me, this was the challenge. And, but it was also the motivation because um, I think my legal training um, chose me to, uh, sorry, um, inspired me and gave me the tools to challenge what is difficult. Because mm -hmm. being, you know, um, an attorney is not for the faint of art, you know. And so I think that that skill was very transferable into what I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. Because um, I wasn't going to sit and feel fearful of doing what I was going to do. Because I knew that the mission of what I could create and how much I could inspire others uh, was more important than my fear. 
and so courage came from that place. Mm, I love how you share that because you're so right, Savita. In life in particular, failure is a fear and that is not celebrated. It's sort of shunned upon. It's, you know, it's something to be scared about rather than embraced. As an entrepreneur yourself, as an entrepreneur myself, everyone out there, you have to embrace failure. It has to be part of who you are. It's like you don't like the word failure and be, be, being told no you're not going to succeed far. So it's almost things like that. How would you convert that into just embracing it and feeling and being part of yourself? And that's exactly what you're doing with Inner Belief. Thanks so much for uh, sharing that. Now, switching gear a little bit, what do you like to do for fun? You know, I am doing what I'm doing for fun. You know, actually what I was doing for fun, I'm now doing, you know, um, just completely. I've never been the one uh, that talked about a side gig or a hobby. I've never been a hobbyist. Uh, or And I believe that if you call something a side gig, it's never going to be the main thing in your life. Um, so um, one of the things I've always been inspired by is this Japanese word uh, for mission, which mm -hmm. breaks down into the characters she and Mei. You know, and she and Mei put together say live your life you yeah. know and so living your life is your mission and living your mission is what brings joy and part of what I'm doing for fun is living my life and mm. so whatever I do to live my life has to be fun because there's no time for much else I think the pandemic has taught us that you know so this is something I pondered over and a lot, and which is why I love art, culture of every kind. We have so much to learn and put it into um, something meaningful. So uh, what I do for fun is um, what I'm doing every day. I love creating. Um, and so I think for me, uh, if I were to talk about what's a hobby, I think uh, my hobby is to be creative. And then I take it into whatever I'm doing and make sure that um, everything I'm doing is fueled by, uh, by that. So, um, yeah, I would say that it, it's a quality rather than a certain thing. Yeah. Mm, thank you for sharing that. Before we let you go, what advice would you give to any young girls or women out there who would like to follow in your footsteps? Oh, I would say something unequivocally. Please live your life, not someone else's. Never be ashamed of anything you are, because actually what you might think you're ashamed of might be what inspires others. Um, and never live somebody else's life. Live yours and live true to yourself and think big. Think big. Yeah. I love it. Live your life and think big. Amazing. So there's one more thing that I have to say um, in addition to, um, you know, this advice for younger people. Um, I want to say something about your amazing book, Rita, because I read this cover to cover uh, and I, I really recommend this to anyone who's looking for something new and inspirational to read. And um, I want to really share that, um, you know, even when you it talks about your guide to confidence, leadership and workplace success, you know, and um, the piece where I feel, you know, even inner belief dovetails with this is, you know, um, the goddess of go-getting is really a woman in a sense who is living true to her inner belief and is able to find success and, you know, be, and through, you know, being confident of who you are, not what someone else is. And this book resonated with me on so many levels. And while it talks about diversity, it talks about all of these beautiful things, this concept of empowerment and of confidence and what you bring in what you do and how you live your mission is very much a part of this book as much as it is about inner belief. And um, I wanted to say, I found so much commonality there and I, I, I really loved your book. Um, thank, thank you, you so, so much. We <laughs> appreciate you sharing that. So, and thank you for sharing your incredible story with us today. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us on this empowerment journey. We want you all to embrace your inner goddess of go-getting. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma. Mm -hmm.